I have opened the image that we used in the slideshow in Photoshop to show you how to convert this image from being RGB because I pulled it off the internet to being spot colors for printing. But I would like to show you whoops, how I found that image. I did a search at creativecommons.org and I just searched for penguin. And when you search for penguin or anything, you can search for cat, house, bird, whatever you want to search for, um, you're going to get mostly raster-based images. But for what we're doing, it's easier to start with an image that is kind of on or off, black or white kind of vector art, um, only because when we make a selection, it will be easier. And so if you want to find the image that I found or one that would be appropriate, like even these vector art images here would not be um, would not be as easy to work with in this specific example because they have tonal ranges or they have gradients. If you come up to the top of the Google search, you can change the type to be clip art, and then it will give you just kind of clip art type things. And so any of the ones that have like hard on or off solid colors would be good. And then I just chose this one because I thought it was cute. And so that's what I'm going to use for the demo. If we jump back to Photoshop, um, first I open this image and it's a PNG and so I should save a copy of it and I'm going to save it on my desktop as penguin spot colors dot PSD make sure that you change the so the file extension up here says dot PSD that doesn't change the file down here where it says format that's what changes the file and so I need to change it to Photoshop if I want to save it as a Photoshop file uh, now, if I was going to actually print this, I would make sure it has enough pixels for what I need. But I don't care what the size is for the demo, but that would be the, your next process. Once you're happy with the size, you'll change the color mode from RGB. So if we zoom in over here, from RGB to CMYK because it's printing. You will always get a prompt when you do that. It's basically saying you're destroying your color, and you are, and you have to accept it because that's the only way to change your color from one color mode to another. And then now we can start the process for creating your spot colors. So you need to open the channels panel and if it's not already open on the right hand side of your docked panels over here, you can open it via the window menu and choose channels, they're alphabetical. And because we change it to be CMYK, you will see that, that you have a CMYK channel. And if you turn the little eyeballs off, you can see the density of each color. If I was going to print this with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, I would print this much black so the black circles for the eyes and then a little bit of black on the outside of the penguin and I would print this much yellow and this much uh, magenta and this much cyan and as you print them one over top of the other so this is where the cyan would be this is what it would look like if you printed magenta right over the top of cyan and then printed yellow over the top and then printed black over the top now that's not what we want to do because that's harder for us to print than it would be just to print three colors a blue, a black, and an orange. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create new channels and call them spot channels. I'm going to grab the magic wand tool. It looks like this in CC 2018. And because the colors are on or off, I should be able to make sure all the channels are selected and click on the blue area and it will automatically select all the blue. When the blue is selected, we can hit the option fly out menu on the top of the channels panel and choose new spot channel. A dialog box will appear and it will, in my case, it will show you the very last color that you used and that's not what I want. So I don't want the penguin to be black. Maybe I do it actually. You could print this in two colors instead of three if you did a black penguin. But for our example, I don't want it to be black and so I'll choose a little color um, swatch and then choose the color I want. And so I'm going to choose it from the Pantone Color Bridge Coded because those are the books we use for our classes. And then you can scroll through here and you can choose whatever color you want. If you would like a green penguin, choose a green color. If you would like pink penguin, choose pink color. I'm going to choose the blue color. But before I do, I want to know, see how it looks dark? Um, go by the color you see in the swatch library because right now your pink color is blending with the blue color of the original penguin behind it because we still have the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels. And so you just have to ignore that it looks purple. It will be this color pink when you're done. And so we'll grab a blue color, let's say this one here, and select OK. Notice it's still darker. It will end up being this shade of blue when I'm done. And then, whoops, I just want to note that it's called Pantone 307CP. 
And so I'll make this say Pantone 307CP so I know what the color is. And as soon as you do that, it adds a new channel to your channels panel and you can see that it will print 100% or it's black, it's as, as dense as it can get, of whatever color Pantone 307C is, which we know is the blue color. Now you need to repeat that for your other two colors and what's important is that you need to have the CMYK channel selected or else when you try to make a selection of the eyeballs or the beak and the feet, it won't work. And so on this channel here, I only have active area for the outside of the penguin. And so if I click on the inside, I'm going to get a selection of the big oval on the inside of the penguin. But if you activate the CMYK channels and have them selected, now you can select the eyeball and hold shift and do the other eyeball. And now when you have that selected, you can repeat that process. Hit the option file menu, choose new spot channel, click on color, find the color that you want. And so there's a black one towards the top. So we'll do Pantone process black CP. Pantone. And now we have a spot channel just for the eyeballs. And we'll do that one more time. So we need to make sure all the channels are selected, CMYK. Select the beak, hold shift, and get the two feet. And now hit the option fly out menu, create a new spot channel, click on the color. You don't want it to be black, you want it to be whatever orangey color of your choosing. We'll go with this color here. Again, it's going to be darker on the screen than you see in your color library because whatever color you choose is blending with the colors beneath it. And so this is your color blending with the original orange colors of the penguin. And this one is Pantone 1375 CP. 1375. And you can select OK. And so now, in theory, we have this area that will print with our orangey color. And then we can print the eyeballs with black, right? And so if we combine the two, you can see where's black and where's orange. And then we can print this area with the blue. And when we print the blue and the black and the orange, we will create our whole image. But we're not done because um, we have not gotten rid of the content that's in the black channel, the yellow channel, the magenta channel, or the blue or the cyan channel. And so right now, if I send this to a commercial printer, it would be printing with seven inks. It would print with cyan, magenta, yellow, black, plus my three spot colors. And so the last thing we need to do is get rid of anything that would have been in the CMYK channels. And the easiest way to do that is to select all the channels at once and select everything on your page. You can do Command A or Control A to select all. You could use your rectangular marquee tool to select everything. You can use the eraser tool. Whoever you want to get rid of it, you need to select. And then I'm going to hit the delete key, delete the content. And so now if we look at the channels panel, all the CMYK channels are empty. And so if I sent this file to a commercial printer, they would know I don't want to use cyan, magenta, yellow, or black to print this penguin. I want to use Pantone 307, Pantone Process Black, whatever it was called, and Pantone 1375. And then the last thing is if it really bugs you, because uh, it's a transparent document, you can go to your layers panel. And you can fill this layer, layer one. You can do Command A to select all, and then Edit Fill. And you can fill it with white, just to give it an opaque background so that it feels not as uncomfortable when it has a transparent background. Now, let me show you what that means. So when I create the spot colors in Photoshop, I'm preparing something for commercial printing. And oftentimes what, times what that means is I'm going to throw it into an InDesign document in preparation for page layout design. And so if I open up InDesign, I'm going to put this into a project. So let's pretend it was a bigger project that has multiple pages on it. But for now, I'll just create whatever the default document will give me. In order to get artwork from outside of InDesign into InDesign, you choose File Place. You don't need to know that for this class, though, so you can just kind of play along. And I'm going to place the PNG file, the one I pulled off of the internet. And then I'm going to File Place and place the Photoshop file we just made with the spot colors and show you how that would be communicating different things to a commercial printer. In InDesign, we have the ability to see what colors we're printing with. If we go to the Window menu and choose Output and Separations Preview, 
Separations preview panel can be used to show you color separations or basically how you would separate the colors before you print with them. So when we print with them, we layer one color right over top of the next. And so if we turned all the channels off except for cyan, we can see that in the CMYK version, we would have to layer cyan right over the top of magenta and then yellow right over the top of both of them and then black right over the top and eventually we would create what's called a process build to create the illusion of these colors because these colors don't actually exist they are made from little dots called halftones that make it look like it's blue and orange but really they're just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that create those other colors but if we wanted to print with actual ink colors instead of using CMYK we could print with Pantone 307 CP everywhere we want the blue to be and then we could just print with Pantone process black CP right here where the eyeballs are and then print the beak and the feet with a separate color and that would be easier to print than layering these over top of each other perfectly okay um, this is probably the hardest thing that we're covering in this lecture and so I would really like you to find your own image on the internet of a penguin or a cat or something like that that has limited colors and I would like you to create a uh, document in Photoshop that is broken down into spot colors and if you can do that then you should feel really good about your skill set moving forward in Photoshop because this is one of the harder things that we cover this semester. If you have any questions don't be afraid to ask me or your teacher whoever your teacher may be um, for help and we highly recommend you're participating in the skills practices for each lesson. Um, they will become more and more important as the semester progresses. And so it is in your best interest if you want to not only get a good grade in this class, but really be successful in Photoshop to actively participate in those, those uh, skills practices for each lesson. Okay, that wraps up this lecture. Um, you can move on to the knowledge test and to the skills practice.